wrote most of the Psalms in the Bible. King David, renowned as a poet, musician, and Israel's greatest monarch, is traditionally credited with composing the majority of the Psalms found in the Bible's Book of Psalms. David's authorship is explicitly attributed to numerous Psalms in the superscriptions, highlighting his role as both a prolific composer and a spiritual leader. The Psalms attributed to David reflect a diverse range of themes, emotions, and experiences, including praise, thanksgiving, lament, confession, petition, and trust in God. David's intimate relationship with God, forged through the highs and lows of his life, imbues his Psalms with authenticity, depth, and timeless relevance. Despite his flaws and failures, David's poetic legacy continues to inspire believers of all generations to express their deepest thoughts and emotions in prayerful communion with God. His psalms serve as a source of comfort, guidance, and spiritual nourishment for those who seek to cultivate a deeper relationship with the divine. What is the name of the hill where Jesus was crucified? The hill where Jesus was crucified is known as Golgotha, a name derived from the Aramaic word meaning, place of the skull. Also referred to as Calvary in Latin, Golgotha is traditionally identified as the site of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, located just outside the walls of ancient Jerusalem. The significance of Golgotha as the place of Jesus' sacrifice and redemption is central to Christian theology, symbolizing the culmination of God's redemptive plan for humanity. The New Testament Gospels describe how Jesus was led to Golgotha, where he was crucified alongside two criminals, fulfilling Old Testament prophecies and offering himself as the atoning sacrifice for sin. Golgotha thus becomes the focal point of Christian devotion, representing the triumph of love over hatred, life over death, and salvation over condemnation. Pilgrims and worshippers from around the world visit Golgotha to reflect on the profound significance of Jesus' sacrifice and to commemorate the events of his crucifixion and resurrection. Which prophet saw a valley of dry bones come to life? The prophet Ezekiel, known for his vivid visions and symbolic acts, saw a valley of dry bones come to life in a remarkable vision recorded in Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14. This visionary experience, often referred to as the Valley of Dry Bones Prophecy, serves as a powerful allegory of spiritual renewal, restoration, and the revitalization of Israel. In the vision, Ezekiel is transported by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with dry, lifeless bones, symbolizing the spiritual desolation and national exile experienced by Israel. In response to God's command, Ezekiel prophesies over the bones, proclaiming the word of the Lord and invoking the breath of life. Miraculously, the bones begin to come together, flesh covers them, and breath enters them, transforming the lifeless bones into a vast army of living beings. This vision symbolizes God's promise to restore Israel from spiritual death and exile, breathing new life and hope into his chosen people. The Valley of Dry Bones prophecy serves as a profound testament to God's power to resurrect and revitalize that which was once dead, foreshadowing the ultimate redemption and renewal achieved through Christ's resurrection. What is the last book of the New Testament? The last book of the New Testament is the Book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse. Written by the Apostle John while exiled on the island of Patmos, Revelation is a prophetic and apocalyptic work that unveils a series of vivid visions and symbolic imagery concerning the final consummation of God's redemptive plan for creation. The book is structured as a series of prophetic messages and heavenly visions communicated to John by the risen Christ, unveiling the cosmic conflict between the forces of good and evil, the triumph of Christ over Satan, and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. Revelation concludes with a vision of the New Jerusalem, the Bride of Christ, descending from heaven, symbolizing the ultimate fulfillment of God's purposes and the eternal reign of Christ. Despite its complex symbolism and esoteric imagery, Revelation offers believers assurance of God's ultimate victory over evil, the vindication of the saints, and the hope of a new heaven and earth where God will dwell with his people forever. What is the shortest book in the New Testament? The shortest book in the New Testament is 3 John, a brief epistle written by the Apostle John to a fellow believer named Gaius. Despite its brevity, 3 John addresses important themes related to hospitality, hospitality, and support for itinerant missionaries. The epistle commends Gaius for his faithful hospitality towards traveling missionaries and warns against the negative influence of a man named Diatrephs, who rejected John's authority and refused to show hospitality to those sent by him. 3 John provides valuable insights into the early Christian community's practice of hospitality and the challenges faced by itinerant ministers in their efforts to spread the gospel.
It serves as a reminder of the importance of generosity, hospitality, and unity within the body of Christ.